shipping and handling. No strings attached, no obligation. <laughs>uh, Berlin is coming up, New York City, Chicago. I'm simply trying to be as open with all of you as possible about my training plan. Keeping in mind, I'm still, I still have never raced a road marathon. And the reason, okay, I was gonna save this for the end, but I'll say it now. The reason I don't go out and hire a coach, uh, one is a little bit of money, uh, but two is I love testing the waters. I love failing and figuring out what is working and what is not working in marathon training. So like with Cleveland, I ended up with an injury. That was a moment of learning. And I hope down the road, I'm talking like, I hate to break your heart, but I'm talking like 10 years from now, I will maybe think about becoming a coach. But right now I'm focused on dabbling and figuring out once again, as I already said, what's working and what's not working within long distance running, whether it's half marathons, marathons, or frankly, ultra marathons. So that's where I'm at with the reason why I don't go out and hire a coach is I love the process of figuring it out and dabbling and kind of that mad scientist approach where I'm just like, okay, tinker, 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 let's do the vest, let's do 14ers, let's do threshold runs, let's do nine minute and 55 second easy days per mile, like really slow bopping along easy days. So anyway, that's a little rant for you today. Okay, before we dive in, first of all, in the full review of the Nike Turbo 2, I do have an update for you, a little bit of a concern. Um, yeah, a little bit of a concern in the Turbo 2. Again, that'll be publishing as soon as possible, hopefully in the next 24 to 36 hours. 36 hours, I'll just put it that way. Okay, today's run was 20 miles. 32 kilometers, uh, seven minutes a mile, right where I want it to be, or so seven minutes a mile, or wait, let's see, I wrote it down, is uh, 420 per kilometer. So felt smooth like butter, as I think I posted on Strava, just like I felt smooth, and yes, it was much easier than running with a 20 pound vest on my back, that is for sure. So, okay, let's dive into it. First of all, let's count it out. One, two, three, four, Five, that's right, all the way up to what number? How many days left until race day in Amsterdam? 47 days to go. That's my music to my ears. In fact, I think, I don't even know if in the Cleveland Marathon training block, I'd have to go back and look. I think it sadly was about right now with my 45 or 40 days to go that I got injured uh, leading into Cleveland. So that's, uh, so it's ex I'm so happy that this training block is shorter. Uh, and those were two major lessons from Cleveland. First of all, the training block was too long, was too many days. And number two was I did too much speed work, I believe, on pavement or concrete. It was mostly pavement, which frankly, just so you know, pavement is, from what I've heard, just a little more forgiveness than concrete. Uh, so if you live, if you only have pavement or concrete to choose from, choose the pavement. So those were two lessons from Cleveland. And, uh, but if you do the math again, 47 days to go, minus, you all know how much I love a three week taper. So 21 days, so 47 minus 21, correct me if I'm not doing the math right, is 26 days of higher volume, higher intensity training before the Amsterdam Marathon. So this is exciting. And also I'll just make note of, I am doing two more trail races before Amsterdam. And the second one is exactly three weeks before Amsterdam. So that'll be right when the taper begins, which is perfect timing for me. Um, okay, let's dive into, as I promised, volume. So how many miles per week will I be running leading into the Amsterdam Marathon? And there's a lot of numbers here. I'll also look at, your, look at the screen, look at the titles, because I'll be converting everything to kilometers as well. So last week, which was the week 
was it the week? Yeah, it was the week after the Pikes Peak Ascent. I did 70 miles that week. Keeping in mind, leading into Pikes Peak, I tapered for three weeks. So frankly, my legs were very fresh. I wasn't sore at all after Pikes Peak. Um, so my legs are feeling really, really good right now. So 70 miles last week or 112 kilometers. This week, I'm gonna hit 80 miles for the week or 128 kilometers. Um, which, by the way, this is race week, meaning I'm racing on Saturday out in Utah, as, you, as many of you know. The following week, September 9th to the 15th, I believe it is, I will bump it up. It's time. It's time. Like, time is of the essence. I will bump it up to 100 miles for that week, or 160 kilometers. And then the following week, I'm going to go between... And, uh, so, just so you know, for volume of training, I have a range. I don't lock into one... like. I don't say, okay, I have to hit 100. It'll be like that 95 to 105 range. And then the following week, uh, the 16th to the 22nd, will be 105 to 115, probably like 110-ish. Um, and that'll be the highest I hit leading into Amsterdam, uh, which is, okay, you'll have to look at your screen for the kilometers. I'll put it down there for all of you. Um, and then the following week is race week, leading into my second trail race, uh, the last trail race, uh, before Amsterdam, and I'll drop it down to 80 to 90 miles for that week. And then begins the taper. And for the taper, I will go 70, 50, and 30 miles per week, respectively. Again, keeping in mind, I always run on a range, so I don't feel like I have to hit an exact number. I, and I, that range is always right around 10 miles. Um, and of course, I have to be vigilant of... I. I I, it's all about feel for me. Everything. My head, my mental state, my legs, um, I don't know, I guess my gut even, like am I, am I, is my body responding well to the food that I'm eating? Everything is by feel um, leading into the taper. Um, okay, moving on to workouts. So I will do two threshold workouts in the next uh, 47 days, just two. And that's a lesson from the Cleveland block. I think I ran too many threshold runs, meaning a threshold run for me is right about 520 a mile. Um, but keep in mind, I'm running at elevation. So I'm at 5,000 feet here in Denver, 5,280 feet to be exact. Um, so I will do a nine mile threshold run on, oh my gosh, hold on. I have it written down here. Uh, let's see, looking at September 18th to the 20th, and then the second threshold run will be a 13 mile uh, threshold run October 1st or 2nd, and that'll be it. And so, many of you, I don't know if you know this tip, but if you're training for a marathon, a lot of racers run a half marathon about three to four weeks before the marathon, approximately. Some people do three weeks, some people do five weeks. I wouldn't go below three weeks, I think that's too close. I don't have time nor the resources really to go fly to sea level and race a half marathon fast three weeks before Amsterdam. In fact, it just doesn't work with my other training, with my trail racing schedule. So therefore, I'm going to treat the second threshold run, the 13 miler, as my basically tune up half marathon for Amsterdam. And again, it'll be at 520 per, per mile or 318 per kilometer for the for both of those efforts and yes they will be on dirt i promise i will not do it on pavement again that was the big lesson i think the reason i had a stress reaction in my left foot was too much running on pavement and then as far as anaerobic speed work leading into amsterdam i'm basically locked in to two speed sessions that's it you know my philosophy especially for a marathon is that the marathon is an aerobic event. It's a stamina. It's an endurance event. It's not a speed. It's speed work helps, but I'm telling you, in my humble opinion, it's way more important to focus more of your training on building that aerobic base, that that uh, that foundation for the pyramid. I won't say that again. I've repeated that too much already. Um, so that is my approach. So I will only do two speed sessions leading into Amsterdam. Um, and okay, so first of all, on October, duh, 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 no, sorry, on September 24th, I'm going to do eight by, eight by 800 meters with 60 seconds rest. 
And then on October 8th, I'm gonna do 12 by 1K with 90 seconds rest. Both of them will, the 800 meters might be on grass soccer fields. And then the, the 1K repeats will probably be on a dirt track that is here in Denver. That's so a softer surface once again. Uh, so no pavement. Yeah, it's crazy. No, I, I, it's hard for me to say that because I'm getting ready for a road race, but I'm just trying to be extra careful. I don't want to run on hard pavement or concrete as little as little as possible. Like today's 20 miler, it was probably 14 miles on dirt, six miles on pavement. Like it's just, unless I drive somewhere, like it's just hard to always run on dirt when you live in a city. I get it, but you gotta, you know, you gotta work with what you have sometime. Okay, so those are my two workouts, but in addition, I will not forget plyometrics, form drills, and of course strides. So even though it's not a ton of speed work, I'm still gonna be working on baby turnover and explosion in my legs and those fast twitch muscle fibers in my legs without doing a hard, hard interval session. So I'm not forgetting that, 47 days to do that. Um, and then the weighted vest, uh, yes, I'm not done. I will wear the weighted vest two times in the next 47 days. So not too bad. Remember, I only wear the weighted vest once or twice a month, so not too often. So I will wear it in two more workouts uh, in the next 47 days. Yes, in an uphill effort, uh, meaning a mountain. And then uh, let's see here, what else did I have noted down here? I have here noted injury risk. I just have to be careful. So I know a lot of you are kind of concerned and I appreciate your concern on Strava and down in the comments about how I train. Um, I know it's high volume, but uh, just so you know my history, when I have had stress reactions in the past, and that is my number one injury is stress fractures and stress reactions, is high volume coupled with high intensity. And especially when I'm wearing shoes that don't have a ton of midsole cushion. That's been my history with stress fractures and stress reactions. Uh, so therefore, I'm gonna seek out dirt. Um, this is why I'm gonna continue to train in the mountains because the mountains slow me down and I'm not running at high speeds. Like I'm telling you, like I know, and even the weighted vest, I know it's hard on the body and it's more pounding, um, but based on my history and my experience, that's like the weight, it's, I, I, I'm not gonna say it doesn't matter, but it's the intensity of workouts where I have to be very, very careful. Um, so that's why I've reduced my threshold training in this block and, I've redu and I'm only gonna do two speed sessions, two interval sessions in this block. Um, yes, okay, so I, we're moving along here. Thanks for bearing with me. I'm just running through like all of my thought process in planning out my training and trying to be again as arriving at the starting line in Amsterdam as fit as possible and as fresh as possible. And I should probably add a third thing to this little, uh, now I'm gonna say trio of, of sayings, fresh, fit, and healthy, okay? So that is the goal. Okay, is that it? Uh, I know, let me just see here. Did I, hold on, let me just check. I could talk the rest of the night about training for Amsterdam. I think I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the meetup in Amsterdam here in one second, but I wanna dive right into the question of the day. Uh, marathon training is in full swing across the world. Across the world, folks, it's so exciting. You know, even though Boston was a little disheartening because the uh, live streaming was taken down off of the channel. Anyway, I feel like it's been a long time since we did a watch party for a marathon, but there, it's, it's about to kick into high gear with Chicago, Berlin, uh, New York, and I'll just even say it, like Tokyo is not that far off in 2020. So anyway, and not to mention all the smaller marathons around the world as well that are not part of the, uh, the uh, Abbott, Abbott Marathon World Majors, <laughs> Abbott World Marathon Majors, however you say that. So, um, okay, question of the day. Uh, with marathon training in full swing, what questions, and I'll do my best, to answer as many of them as possible, but keep in mind, but the veteran marathon racers out there, I might need your help down in the comments, but what questions do you have for your marathon training? Maybe for this fall, but it might be too late, okay? Again, stick to your plan, stick to what you have uh, set out to accomplish based on, you know, maybe you started training in July for Chicago, like stick to your plan. 
Uh, but if you're getting ready for Boston in the spring, like maybe now is a good time to start getting those questions going. So what questions you have for marathon training down in the comments and then the meetup in Amsterdam. Are you ready? Are you gonna be in Amsterdam at the marathon? Here are the details for the group run in Amsterdam. And uh, all right, I had to just pick a date and pick a time and pick a location. I just had to do it, all right? So I, I, this, is, this is what I came up with. Friday, October 18th, so two days before the marathon, all right? So then Saturday, I'm just gonna chill out and rest. Um, so Friday, October 18th at 10 a.m. local time. So whatever, it's, you know, in Amsterdam, local time. Friday, October 18th at 10 a.m. local time in Vondel Park. However you spell it. Actually, I'll put it on the screen in a, in a title. Vondel Park, all right? But the park looks pretty good size. So where in the park? Are you ready for this? We're going to meet at the statue of Joost van den Vondel. Van den Vondel. Uh, so I'm not saying that right, but that's okay. Here's a picture of the statue. So we're going to meet at this statue at 10 a.m. on Friday, October 18th for a four-mile or about six to seven K uh, shakeout run, meaning nice and easy, nine minute pace, you know, very easy pace. We're just gonna enjoy nine minutes per mile. We're just gonna go easy. I might do some strides afterward, uh, but four miles or six and about six and a half K at that statue. I cannot wait to meet all of you. And uh, yes, we're gonna go with, uh, <laughs> we're gonna go with Bundle Park for the keyword. Um, I'm not, I know I'm not saying that right, but that's okay. I can't wait to meet many of you. There's a lot of folks who are racing and it's gonna be fun. And I will be wearing my green hat at that statue. So hopefully you can find me there. Um, and all right, here we go. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. And yes, a couple shout outs to some old vlogs. We're gonna go with the last threshold run I did in the Cleveland Marathon block. Also, uh, and that'll be on the right and on the left, how to plan a training calendar. That'll be on the right. All right, I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.